And there's another new product to, to go ahead and try to get your hands on to mine Ethereum. And this one is coming from Tom's Hardware. What we got is a fanless Ethereum mining box and yeah, they say it looks like a PlayStation 2 and it promises 65 mega hash a second at 30 watts. Environmentally friendly, but not a great investment. Jazzminer X4 ETC hash brick via fanless tech. Miner arrived on Amazon with a hefty $2,099 price tag. And before you guys ask, no, I didn't get one in time. Would I have? Oh, it'd be a terrible decision, but I would for the channel. You guys know I would because, hey, it is what it is. But, however, unlike other ASIC miners that are hard on the ears and the power bill, the Jazzminer X4 ETC hash brick features a fanless design and a 30 watt chip. The miner leverages the Jazzminer X4 chips from Sunloon technology, which uses 3D chip stacking with through silicon, wait, stacking with through silicon vias. There we go, TSVs. The technology allowed Sunlane to pack the computing and data storage unit onto the same chip. The Jazzminer X4 is a large chip that measures 45 by 45 millimeters, boasting a die size of 678 millimeters squared. The chip has five gigabytes of memory at its disposal and offers memory bandwidth up to one terabytes per second. In terms of mining performance, the Jasmine X4 4 supposedly delivers up to 65 mega hash a second with a power consumption of around 23 watts for Ethereum miner. That would make it basically the most efficient miner currently available. And I'm wondering if you could get more out of it because one terabytes per second is more than an RTX 3090 has and that gets 120 mega hash a second. That, that being said, I wonder if they just wanted to advertise the super low wattage here. And I'm curious of when it gets into people's hands, what it ends up looking like. Because 23 watts for 65 mega hash is absolute insanity. Of course, Ethereum is slated to go proof of stake at some point in the next four months. Maybe it's been delayed multiple times already. But the Jazzminer X4 has other options. It supports the popular ET hash and ETC hash algorithms, which opens the doors for a plethora of cryptocurrencies, including Ethereum Classic, uh, Ethereum, Metaverse ETP, Expanse, Pearl, Dubai Coin, Re uh, Resoc, Ethergem, Elysium, Atheos, Mix Marvel, Callisto, Mother of All Chains, Ether One, which is ETHO, and Ethereum X, which is ETX. But Ethereum is currently by far the most profitable option out of all of those. One of the design choices here that you should take into account is the five gigabytes of memory. And that's because essentially, even if ETH gets delayed, like indefinitely, right? Which some people think is going to happen. I don't personally think so. It looks like the test net's going along pretty well. That being said, even if it did get delayed indefinitely, the DAG size here is going to be a problem uh, shortly, right? It was five, we're over four gigabytes for the DAG size, and they only put five gigabytes of memory on this chip. So they're clearly, it seems like targeting the fact that Ethereum will move proof of stake in this release and basically decreasing the bomb cost of this unit by decreasing the total amount of memory available, I guess in hopes that essentially, you know, Ethereum Classic remains to basically be under four gigabytes uh, for the DAG size at this time. It supports the pot. Okay, so there we go. The Jasmine X4 ETC hash brick measures 257 by 100 by 200 millimeters and weighs 4.8 kilograms. It's technically portable enough to take it with you on your travels and small enough that you can stack hundreds of them in a room. All the device needs is an ethernet connection to the internet to do its thing. Aesthetically, the Jazzminer X4 ETC hash brick looks like a crossover between a PlayStation 2 and a lunchbox. The company rates the Jazzminer X4 ETC hash brick with an approximate power consumption of 30 watts under operating temperatures between zero to 40 degrees Celsius. It doesn't draw much power, but the modest hash rate and the hash price means it will take a long time for miners to break even. Based on current price profitability, the brick can net around $2.85 a day, and you can pick it up on Amazon for 
Oh, we're going to take that away just in case. I'm not sure what's on there. Uh, for $2,099. Let me get you guys the link here, though, so you can go take a look at the Amazon page. Boom. All right. So there we go. And on the Amazon page, let's see what it says. Pretty much all the stuff that we got here. One of the other notes is that uh, it is fanless and the noise level is 50 decibels. So that was an additional um, note that they had pulled up there. If you're curious about it, you can go ahead and use that affiliate link. Um, obviously, I can't get any sales off of it because there's none in stock. So the official global distributor for the Jasmine X4 jing, uh, Jingle Mining has the miner up for sale at $14.99, $550 off the regular price. Either way, it's not a good time to invest in ASIC miner uh, since the merge when Ethereum transitions from proof of work to proof of stake model is just months away. With Ethereum, it would, it would currently take over 500 days to break even using the discounted price. If the merge goes through, that time might double. As far as this goes, they already talk about the issues um, with it moving proof of stake, etc., and that sort of thing. We talked about at the end of the show yesterday, Ethereum Classic and the potential there. And really what's going to end up having to happen is a whole bunch of price discovery. Last night, Bitsby Trippin did a live stream. I highly recommend going back and watching his live stream, specifically surrounding, of course, the merge and basically GPU mining in 2022. And his thoughts are essentially what we're going to see, of course, is price discovery across all the different GPU mineable algorithms, including Ethereum Classic, etc. And essentially it'll depend on like what the price would be. For example, for Ethereum Classic, he's saying for it to handle the hash rate moving over, the price discovery needs to hit three to four hundred dollars. The good news is, is from his perspective, and once again, go watch his video. We'll definitely link it afterwards down in the show notes. But what's going to happen is once Ethereum and the dev team lock in a date, he's saying he expects basically some sort of front running to start happening on not front running in that terms, but front running or front purchasing buying of different assets that are GPU mineable to start happening on these different networks. And as GPU miners, we'll just want to pay attention to which ones start getting the big pumps, whether that's Flux or Ethereum Classic and so on. And we'll have to kind of see, of course, where it goes from there. Also, you guys should know Bitsby Trippin's a huge Ravencoin fan because it's the closest to Bitcoin. Uh, his problems with Flux, which I agree with, is, of course, the developer fee and uh, basically we've seen that with Ethereum. That hasn't worked out so well. Uh, which is kind of an issue. And then, of course, Ethereum Classic, I think we agree as far as that goes on its compatibility, uh, which could be the positive note for there. And that's kind of a sum up of his deal. In relation to the fanless mining board here that we're talking about, should you be purchasing one for $14.49? Uh, Probably not, but also 30 watts for 65 mega hash is insane. That's going to be the best uh, hash to power consumption you can currently get. And that is basically it. So, you know, it is it is what it is at this point. I'm curious about picking one up. I think they look really cool, too, if you take a look here. They even have a little handle and all that. I don't know. I think you could also overclock it, too. I mean, with... With the size of the bus, or sorry, size of the bandwidth here, one terabyte per second. Now, uh, one of the things to note about that is the 120 mega hash a second on the GDDR6X would be different, presumably, than the GDDR6 that would be used in this particular setup. So, so there you go. I'm going to get a drink. I hope you enjoyed this clip from the Crypto Mining Morning Show every Monday through Friday, 7.45 a.m. Pacific and 10.45 a.m. Eastern Time. You can check out more clips here 
or if you're interested in checking out the entire live show, you can check that out down here. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next Tuesday.